Welcome back, Lord Captain. During your absence, we assisted the ground forces by coordinating their movements from orbit. Detailed casualty and damage reports have been submitted. Uh, it is with deepest awe that I inform you that the timely intervention and resilience of the world's defenders managed to break back the raid, which had threatened to turn into a protracted war. Dargona suffered losses, but the Hive has sufficient capacity to restore the administrative work, networks, and industries as expeditiously as possible. The world remains intact despite the insidious blow dealt by the Xenos. I have been given Sklander's reports that he failed to deliver in time. They indicate the Xenos activity dropped sharply after you departed for the Cernus Maleficum. Considering the scale of the Dargonus raid, it is safe to assume that Jokari used up all the forces at their disposal and may now require some time to replenish the losses. Without Achilles, we are blind to the scheming of these enemies of humanity, but our strategists are hope still hoping for a lull in attacks and raids, which will allow us to gather our strength for a new conflict. Okay. Woo! We did it. I feel like we can all breathe easy now. Dargonus is safe. We did that huge fight. Like, that was beefy, y'all. And now we shall... I don't think anybody's going to have anything to say. Like, I feel like that's the one thing I'm kind of surprised by is that companions aren't really commenting too, too much on, like, some of these bigger... But there could be something here. However, I'm hope I'm going to assume, like, some of that stuff, too, will come into play, like, once we finish Gabba Gamma, stuff like that. Anything? Lord Captain? No. Lord okay. Captain? Yes. Heinrich? You have my complete attention. Okay. No. So, let's just look at our journal quickly. So, we have to go to Kranich and deal with this. But also, I do want to do this. We need to go to Tenabris Aque. Um, classified information we do on Kiavagama. Oh, on Footfall. Right, so we have to go to Footfall too. Uh, and then that, something that, okay. So yeah, we're, we're doing really well. I think what we'll do, um, is probably finish up Kiava Gamma and the, Alda and the thing for Yurlet. And then after that, we'll go to Footfall, do whatever Jai wants to do. And then from there, I've become officially the rogue trader. All right, so before we go any further, it is time to level everybody up. Tessa's Gaunt, Wild Hunt. A prior to attack, all prey suffer a, ooh. Bounty Hunter gains plus agility bonus, recharges, ooh. Wait, and three charges. Interesting. And whenever the Bounty Hunter attacks one target with Wild Hunt, this attack deals, no, we're going with that. 100% because that's been the only thing that we've been using on test. Oh no. I don't. Do okay. Be brave. <laughs> There's so much to go through. <laughs> we could do this. Uh, we're just gonna like kind of sort of do it. Oh man. I'm so happy though that um, they don't make you go like each, like they just kind of keep it moving that's actually really nice uh precise sight sure y'all i'm not i'm not trying trying i'm just so in that way if we have to take her out for whatever reason we're better like we're we're not doing this then 85 you know she has demolition not that i need her to have demolition but can't hurt i'm gonna give her this we did it Oh, it's only two ranks. Uh, let's give you fellowship. Let's do persuasion and all allies in the selected area also gain dodge parry armor. That sounds fantastic. I love dodge and... Oh, that's a lot. Once again, we got this. Piercing shot. I don't know why I would put piercing shot on. Why would you do that? Um, Call the bold? Next attack this turn will have... Oh, okay. Wait, no, foreboding, perfect timing, precog, dominate. Um, yes. Okay, gruesome kill. Let's do awareness. Let's do perception. Let's do, what is unnatural luck? Uh, 
yes. Let's do hunting surge. I don't know. Wait, no. Hunt. Let's do heightened concentration. Uh, and does she have? Can she do Medicaid? I don't know. I'm gonna just so because like the more people that have it randomly, the better. In my opinion. Okay, this is only one rank. This is great. Allies in selected area have their weapon and attacks by allies located at ignore. Some action points granted by take and hold is increased to five. Let's do this one. Okay, Pascal. Let's give you until the end of combat, the target of dispatch loses. Until the end of combat, whenever the assassin hits an opening, they gain. Ooh. Sure. Actually, that sounds great. Okay. Heinrich. Uh, if dispatch attack kills the target, all enemies in a three cell radius around the target gain two stacks of disturb. Like, I don't, I don't know if I'm using dispatch enough on them for this to be suit. Cause I normally use the other one. Let's do that. Argenta. What do you, all right. So the first time in combat that the arc militant reaches zero wounds under the effect of study. Okay. Until the end of combat, you know. We'll try that. Hey, once again, don't think I'm actually using that on Argenta, so we have it if we need it. Uh, the Vanguard cannot die. Y yes. Literally, all you had to say was the Vanguard cannot die, and I'm over here like, yes. <laughs> I don't even need to read the rest. He can't die. Yes. Okay, so I was poking around on somebody else's map on where we need to go. Kiava Gamma is out here so we need to like i feel like i saw somebody come like down this way here or whatever um so no there's like we have six um we could just do this would this like honestly i'm i'm willing i'm willing it i'm willing to lose four points i'm gonna also quick save just in case now we'll warp travel. Please leave us alone. Yes, turn your roots. Okay. Did you come out here? N no. Really? Really? Okay. Here. I'm gonna warp travel. Turn your roots. There. What is this? <gasps> okay, that's for Irolet. Great, that's fantastic. And this is the general area that we need. So let's warp travel. I know that we're missing planets. We're gonna have to like backtrack all the way up here anyways. So at that point we can go in and visit them if we really want to. The Emperor's Palm. I don't wanna be in the Emperor's Palm though. So you can't like, to make that a route, we'd have to spend three and then it would still be dangerous. So, hmm, this did not work out the way that I was hoping, which would be, so it looks like, but we, okay, that is, you know what, let's go in here. Okay. You know, we'll just go in real quick while I, uh, while I, while I think about how we want to go about this. But the nice thing is we can take our sweet time jumping around the map um, and not really worrying about it because there's nothing timed right now. This is all just us going around, looking at things, figuring out where we want to go, avoiding void ship battles if and when possible. Um, okay, let's see what it is. Uh, the giant rings on this planet's surface can be observed even from orbit. We'll examine them. It is emerged that this planet has a native species of giant insects similar to Terran ants. Just like ants, they sometimes form so-called death spirals, in which one creature follows another without realizing they're going in circles. These were the rings discovered by the ship's observers. The strange phenomenon was originally suspected to be a sign of warp activity or nefarious xeno structure turned out to be a quirk of nature and a tragic one at that. 
you know, that's kind of, that's kind of depressing. Uh, not gonna lie. 100% a little depressing. Uh, this. Provisions. No, I'm gonna hold off on extractions for now. What is this? Uh, the augers have detected a wreckage in the void ship's vicinity, but the exact nature of this wreckage remains unclear. Um, continue on your voyage. Okay. We can always come back. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, weird. It disappeared. Lord Captain, the augers cannot determine whose ship we approached, who the ship we approached you. The blood. Let's start again. Lord Captain, the augers cannot determine who the ship we approached belongs to, but telemetry clearly reveals it's an Imperium vessel. The hull is badly damaged, but there is air in some of the chambers, which means they are hermetically sealed. What are your orders? Uh, send I order to prepare my troops for boarding. I'll personally take part in the exploration. Okay. Uh, we who walk down the same passageways and the same bays day after day, we who are born live and die to the hum of the ship's machines. We forever hunger for the smallest glimpse of another life and for a chance to see the heroes who tirelessly fight for us for the glory of the Imperium. So let's have a tale about the Lord Captain. By the will of the Emperor, the guardian and commander of every good and honest soul upon this void ship, and the time she boarded a vessel named the Fireborn. Like a dead whale cast ashore by the inexorable forces of the swell, the wrecked vessel was confronting a confronting sight for its unwitting visitors. Some bays still retained an atmosphere, but there was no life anywhere. The ship was dead. Its machine spirit dissipated into the darkness of space. It was just a husk left. And the rogue... Traitor's crew were to become scavengers swarming the carcass of a fallen leviathan. Our Lord Captain oversaw the expedition personally. She decided... As one. So this is... We don't know who's recording this. Um... Let's try it. To train the penetrating gaze of the augers array on the damaged ship. The augers keen eye scanned the eerie vessel, identifying that the void ship was gravely damaged and was in the process of final erosion. There was very little time to explore it. Three sectors seemed the least damaged, the bridge, middle crew, and deck, and the service bay. Uh, have Adira feel out a course, an unholy psyker she may be, but even souls as dark as her submit to the Lord Captain's will. With hostile eyes upon her, Adira sank into a trance. When she resurfaced, she reported that the ship has been victim of the warp. The bridge had suffered worst of all. It was the section that provoked the greatest anxiety and trepidation in the Psyker. The service bay was the least damaged section, though Adira spoke with no particular interest. Turn her attention to the scout units waiting. The Lord Captain had decided which of the three teams she would lead and which two would be entrusted to their officers. Let here be known the names of those honest people who stood before the rogue trader in the moment, the taciturn and grave young Ho Soon, whose words was firm as a handshake, Captain Vesti, whose jokes will be remembered by everyone on decks three to five, Captain Matina, the senior officer of the third unit known to many as Grey Matina. She had been leading units back when the current crop of scouts were snot-nosed kids. No one on deck was in any doubt that the navigation inside the wreck ship would be difficult. The units would be separated by kilometers of twisted metal, dead modules devoid of atmosphere, collapsed passageways, and hull breaches the size of a house. The only thing connecting the brave teams would be the delicate thread of a Vox link. Um. Hmm. Gray and her people, uh, target was the service bay. Oh. From here on, we relate the events based on what we have learned from witnesses, the people who accompanied the Lord Captain on the tour of the dead, dread ship. The shuttle started up one after another, dispersed, each heading for its se selected target. An hour spent on cutting through the hull in the freezing vacuum of space and a, f a fussy boarding. And then finally, the rogue trader stepped onto the cold, dark deck of the dead ship. The light of the torches revealed a sign in the gloom, fireborn. After a long exchange with the Vox Master, who quickly checked the archives, it was established that the dead vessel was that of Captain Noiva Van Dane, registered at Kiava Gamma Port. Gramatina said a prayer appropriate to the situation, and then she looked expectantly at the Lord Captain awaiting for orders. Uh, that's 100% and 100. Okay. Uh, knowing the typical layout of service bays, Lord Captain directed the scouts where the valuable components would be. After examining the service bay and consulting the auger, suggested where the ship's undamaged... Okay, let's do this. From here on, we relate the uh, the Lord Captain's assessment 
proved to be correct. After a thorough search, all searches conducted by Gray Matina were, uh, or as they all were, the scouts found undamaged components and marked them for dismantling later. Sounds crackled from the Vox speakers and light on the casing switched on, signaling a message coming in on the first unit's frequency. Commander Young, who soon calmly reported that his unit was making satisfactory progress towards the ship's bridge. This was followed by a message from the second unit, which was on the crew deck. The Vox speakers crackled, preparing to connect with the unit's commander, Captain Vesti. The words that came through the sound sounded muffled, as though the person on the other end wasn't speaking directly into the Vox, but accidentally pressing the transmission button, or the transmit button, while occupied with something else. I never see anything like it. It's beautiful. Hold on, wait, is that, is it moving? The pale-faced Captain Matina barked out a stream of orders, telling the unit to close ranks around the rogue trader and prepare for trouble. But then the yelling from the Vox turned to laughter. I <laughs> got you, old girl, boomed a voice from the speaker. It belonged to Captain Vesti, the commander of the unit exploring the middle deck. Don't panic, we're all good here. Not a thing to report. I hope where you are is just as uneventful. White with anger, Matina turned to the rogue trader. Captain Vesti has a unique sense of humor. I strongly suggest that your ladyship take him in hand. Uh, between the two by and requested a report, Lord Captain took drastic action to solve the problem, stripping Vesti of command. And what? We're going to defuse the conflict. Captain Vesti reported that his unit's foray had so far proceeded without incident, mystical or otherwise. They had found no survivors from the, crew, the ship's crew, or bodies for that matter. However, the unit had encountered a problem. The passage leading to the deck section with the arsenal and storage depot was seriously damaged, especially power cables proceeding further could be dangerous. Uh, no, we're going to... No, 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 we're going to withdraw. Vesti's unit headed off to carry out their orders while the rogue trader and her team continued on. Fortune smiled on the, the unit this time. Grey Matina, having trusted her instincts and experience, chose to return to the shuttle via an alternate route. In one of the dark, branching passageways, the team discovered a modest but untouched trove of cargo from Kiava Gamma. The voice of Young Ho soon reached the Lord Captain's ears once again. The first unit's captain soberly reported that his people were proceeding to the bridge. Ensuring the deathly silence alerted the Lord, the ensuing deathly silence alerted the Lord Captain that something was wrong. Following the gaze of his team, she saw that the unit's dispatcher, who was carrying the large box caster with an antenna and transmitter, was lagging far behind the rest of the group, and the transmission indicator was dark. There was no incoming messages, even if there had been. Sone's voice would couldn't have sounded so close as if the dispatcher or Sone himself were standing right next to the rogue trader. Sone here, Unit 1 proceeding to the bridge, said the voice again. Now it seemed to be coming from all sides, drawing in from left, right, and under the deck, and even from somewhere in the mess of uh, the cables overhead. Um, so the Lord Captain summoned all her willpower to resist the illusion. The Lord Captain managed to not only maintain her self-control, but also to keep the terrified unit from veering into outright panic, led by the rogue trigger traitor, the scouts hardly retreated to the shuttle, pursued by their comrade's disembodied voice, which soon, which continued to repeat the same brief message. After returning to the shuttle, Tessera received reports about the fireborn status. The tech priest who relentlessly pierced the wreckage with Augur's gaze insisted on curtailing the operation as soon as possible. Fearing imminent destruction, there was also reports from the other two units. Augur's and the Vox system proved equally useless. The first unit, which had been exploring the bridge, had vanished without a trace, almost as if the dead ship had swallowed them whole. The scouts and their commander, Young Ho Soon, had simply disappeared, joining the thousands of crew members lost aboard the Fireborn. The unit assembled at the shuttles, and the Lord Captain gave a final order of this grim expedition. Um, hold a service for the fallen scouts, recite a memorial prayer to the Omnisaya in honor of the... Sh no, hold a service for the fallen scouts. Led by Sister Argenta, the scouts built a funeral pyres, old metal barrels, and small shipping containers served as temple braziers. In the wavering but warm light illuminating their faces, the scouts listened as the sister sang a prayer for the departed. Little by little, the listeners' terrified, weary gazes brightened. As they heard the sisters' words, understanding dawned on the survivors. Death dogged the footsteps of everyone, but there is a destiny higher than death. They should always remember that, that this is their reason to keep, this is the reason to keep going time was up the scouting party returned to their ship with one last look at the fireborn the rogue trader gave the order to fire upon the dead vessel at range for which, for that which was born in fire should also perish in it i like that the way that you can end that 
Um, so back to the expanse. What a cool name for the ship, though, Fireborn. Um, now we are where? So you're here, girl. So we need. We. So is this technically? Hmm. So I guess the question is, we've been here. Because I know, because like it connects. So how do you get... We, I know we've been here. Because that too... Well, have we been there? I thought we've been there. Hmm. So... Like, I wonder, like, I'm super curious as to what I'm missing um, for the, the, like, jumping points to get here. Because I know I'm missing something. I just don't know what. Okay, so I ended up instead doing something mildly stupid and just doing this. Because I didn't personally feel like walking around everywhere and trying to get... Yeah, Kranik is right there. I figure we'll build up the rest of this eventually. Yes, it was probably very silly of me. Um, but I got what we needed. So I'm okay with that. Plus, we've been saving up those uh, charting points, which is great. Uh, a violent battle is unfolding before the rogue trader's eyes. Patrol ships from the Corda fleet are tearing apart two small Eldari vessels. Once they are finished with them, the void ship gave chase after the third already damaged vessel, clearly with the intent of destroying it. Seeing the last ship impending death, Yerlet calls out Solar Captain, her voice trembling. Only the rogue trader's intervention can save her kin from a massacre. Uh, send a message to the Incindia fleet, ordering them to stop the battle. The Voxmaster lays Lower Captain's demand to stop the battle and soon returns with a reply. According to the Corda ship, this group of Xenos are malicious criminals. They're guilty of raiding the system's planets and robbing merchant vessels. Incendia Corda's void ships are intent on performing their duty before the Emperor and exterminating the Xenos. Yurlet sullenly watches the unfolding chase through the stained glass windows of the Captain's bridge. She grimly concedes that no crime should go unpunished except her kin are were flying transport ships. It would have been impossible for them to rob a ship, let alone launch a planetary raid. Vessels such as there simply lack the firepower to do so. The monkey are lying. Um, hmm. I just want to see what I have. Okay. Ask Cordis Patrol for proof of the Xenos transgression. Yes. The patrol captain reluctantly admits that there is no conclusive proof. This system is sometimes a target of pirate raids. However, this changes nothing, for his servants have no mercy for the enemies of humanity. Let's see if we can analyze it. And despite the presence of some weaponry, the Xenos ship is more likely meant for transporting cargo or the xenos themselves rather than direct combat um demand the warship cease fire immediately and retreat let's see yes uh, ooh. unwilling to engage an open battle against the flagship of a foreign dynasty the patrol reluctantly leave its prey and retreat to the edges of the system meanwhile the wounded xeno ship is rapidly distancing itself from the recent battlefield attempting to hide in the shadows of the nearest world Every attempt to contact it is met with frustration, and the Voxmas reports the vessel is in deplorable condition. Who knows how much more the Xeno technology can endure before irreparable, before the irreparable happens? The Aldari, too scared and resentful of the Monkey for the recent deaths of their kin, answer to answer incoming hails. Despite this, Yerled is certain she can convince them to cooperate with Ellen Talk if she's allowed to speak. Go ahead. How did that fail? It had a hundred percent. Okay. Yerlet appeals to her kin's wisdom, but the words of the outcast cannot make them trust the monkey. The pain of loss filled the Eldari hearts. Only recently did the humans destroy two vessels of the children of Azran, and now they offer aid. Worse, they offer aid to the might of their captive sister. No, the Eldari will not fall for this trick. Trying to outpace the pursuit of the monkey vessel, the Eldari overload their void ship drives. One of the damaged engines is unable to bear the strain. Before the eyes of a hundred officers, the Xeno ship flashes in fiery light blue through the stained glass windows as thousands of tiny shards disperse across the system. The bridge officers openly rejoice, offering a prayer to the Emperor. Today the expanse is cleansed of more filth, the enemies of humanity. What is this if not his providence? The, and only the thin figure of the Eldari stands motionless against the backdrop of the intricate stained glass windows, mourning the fallen in solemn silence. Once the pain in Yerlet's soul is numbed, she turns to the Lord Captain and nods, a short, short gesture of gratitude for their attempt to save those who could hardly be saved. Sometime after, Yerlet comes to the Lord Captain, haggard, still holding on to hope. 
She says that she can, came aboard the monkey vessel and set off into the darkness in hopes of finding her kin, but found only corpses slaughtered by humanity's hatred. And though she and the Lord Captain were not always in agreement, the Ellen Talks still try to lend a helping hand in gratitude as promised. She shares the coordinates of her kin's caches. Okay. That's so sad. I am not fighting that. Y'all, we are not. We are so close to Kiava Gamma. We can't do that. A vigilant member of the Augur crew has detected small Xeno vessels drifting through the void. The ship is unpowered and shows no signs of being crewed. Uh, send out a boarding shuttle. And the squad boarded the vessel without issue. Corrosion has laid waste to the ship's systems, which led to the death of the entire crew. The interior is full of Eldari corpses. No weapons were found, and the dead Xenos, judging by their clothing, were not part of any warrior caste, merely a crew of the now defunct ship. Yurlet claims to have recognized a symbol on the dead Eldari's clothes. They were civilian refugees from the craft world, crude and dark. <sighs> the poor things. That's sad. Okay, and we'll scan this and then we're gonna get the heck out of Dodge because I am not tangling with that. Uh, another scan. Mm. Oh no. We're gonna quick save just in case. The planet is devoid of even the most primitive forms of life. However, the crew has made a quite strange discovery a mirror lying right in the center of a huge crater, a completely ordinary mirror in a frame by all appearances in pristine condition. We're going to leave the planet. <laughs> I am not touching that. I am not touching that. Well, I'm not. Nope. Don't. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm like staring at this. Like, don't you dare, Tessera, get into a fight with this ship. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Let's go. We're leaving quick. <laughs>